murals in our district are probably something that I did not see coming. That's how I'd have to say it. it. I never intended to start a mural program. I never dreamed that we'd have 60 plus at this point or that I would have, you know, a kind of a crew of working artists that year to year would come back over and over to create art for our schools. With the artists that I've worked with over the years, you know, some of them, uh, several, three or four, were young artists, you know, early 20s, just kind of getting into fine art, who came from a tagging graffiti background originally. And that's a sign of somebody who's restless and uh, creative and artistic and needs a place or a forum to do that. I remember first looking at graffiti and thinking, like, I could do that, you know? Like, I could do better than that. It's not even that good. And then that's kind of what got me into it. Having art in my life, even though it was graffiti, really was an influential, big, important part of my life. You know, there's so much corporate graffiti with billboards, advertisements, you know, wear this, spray yourself with that. Knowing that, that my artist had that background, we looked for kids, students who were coming from a similar place. It's like an ego thing, you know, the graffiti. It's a... Uh... It's like fame, like your name, you're better than everyone. We could say, we recognize that you're talented and that you're artistic and that you're interested in taking this class with us. And here's a brush and here's what we're going to do with that. And here's how you can get recognized in a positive way. Being a model is really important. You don't really want people to make the same mistakes as you do. Going from there to being a working artist and making murals for schools and, and you know, working with kids. That's where I kind of made the transition from vandal slash uh, exterior decoration enthusiast. It is a, a kind of a natural uh, evolution or transformation, but we were the agent that was doing that. So uh, Louisa and I met, it must have been about six years ago now. So I, I met Ryan at a um, art show. I was doing a piece of artwork for a charity auction. A variety of artists had been asked to design and paint a, um, a retired parking meter. I made this parking meter um, and I painted it as a Campbell soup can. I actually bought Ryan Campbell's piece. I didn't know him. I get tapped on the shoulder and this, this woman says, are you Ryan Campbell? Are you the artist that, that made this parking meter? I said, yes. She goes, I'm Louisa Castro from the Palm Springs School District. And I want you to come in and talk with me. And I was like, okay. <laughs> the way I met Louisa is actually through my friend Eduardo. We used to paint a lot of graffiti together. Aaron, I met, gosh, he must have only been about 20. Like, we did a lot of art together. He just kind of, he always asked me, you know, to come around, help him with designs, help him paint. He was cocky. He was, you know, full of himself and just a, a really outgoing young man with a lot of talent. But by the next year, Louisa hired me and uh, we were teaching kids how to paint murals. Aaron really believes in the way art can change the world and that it's not about money and that you give it. You give it freely and you share it with people and that's something that I you know, feel deeply from my own heart. Me and Louisa, we met a little while back. Luis is the youngest artist that I have working for the school district and he contacted me right after he graduated from Palm Springs High School and he wanted to do a mural. I spoke with my art teacher. He had a great design and it wasn't, um, it didn't, it didn't go through. It didn't get approved. The Kauia Indians don't wear headdresses. Sometimes that's how it is. Right time, right place. Two years after. I was driving down the street and I saw a big mural up on the side of a bakery and I thought, gee, that looks like Luis Castro's work. So I thought, gee, he did that huge mural all on his own and I'm not trained him to do it. He's got what it takes because it's hard. It's not an easy process. It takes a lot of um, persistence and desire. A mural is a really big painting. And in schools, we have a lot of fun with it because you can put a big painting in a hallway or you can put it on a wall that faces the street so people can see it. Or you can put it on a handball court on the playground where children are playing every day. When I was in third grade, I was in Vista del Monte. We all got to participate in a mural where we kind of got paint on our hands and put it on the wall. And then we got to kind of like draw little details to make every individual handprint unique. Art is like you're listening to your inner teachers. It's from inside out. There's been instances in creating a mural where I've worked with students, and then there's been instances where I've made the mural and the kids come and see it. Getting the opportunity to spray paint something large in that setting is really freeing, and it's, it's fun because a lot of those kids are getting an opportunity to see somebody use spray paint in a different way. It's just amazing the effect that it has when you walk onto a campus and you see a mural. I'm an adult, obviously, and it, it's an impact on me, and you can just imagine what it does to the kids. Murals are also very specific to the 
wall, you know, until where that environment is. They're huge pieces of art that people people can walk up and touch. I like to think of it in terms of that's their home and we're decorating their home. Why as a society or a culture or a community do you want to have beautiful things in your midst? What does that do to the soul of a place? What does that look like? My process starts with a phone call from Louisa. The first step in the mural process is me matching up a principal and a school with an artist. I just use a pencil, maybe a pen. I usually do about two or three different drawings. Once I have it on the computer, I'll digitally paint over it. From there I go to color, and then um, it turns into a projection, a large-scale projection. Step two is making, creating a meeting between them. It's really nice to have everyone in one place and decide on something. What I envision for the mural is taking the pyramid and deconstructing it. Kind of mystical. Like almost Carlos Castaneda you know, storyline. It would be nice to have a whole wall to scan, especially for the age group we're dealing with. It's going to look like yeah, a wall, huge. you know? After the artist has done a first rendering and that gets um, shown to the principal, the principal will give feedback. The only thing that will really mess up a mural is, uh, you know, like analysis paralysis. We go back and forth a couple times and then it goes to the district level. And then the next part is the fun part where I get to go scribble on the wall. And then we're ready to paint. I was 13, about 14 maybe, and I had open heart surgery. When my son was sick and we were spending a great deal of time at Cedar sinai I was terribly grief stricken. I missed the first couple months of school from the surgery. I would walk the halls and they have gorgeous art pieces. They're just huge pieces by famous modern artists. But the plus of it was I sat home and I was constantly coloring and drawing. And I even in my sad state of confusion and despair, I would stop in front of these pieces and stare at them and have a moment of peace. I guess as an artist it was great because it shaped me and it gave me the time away from the social scene to really focus on making artwork. And I thought, wow, that's really powerful. And somewhere in the back of my head was, what if we did that in schools? Schools are institutions. What if we did something where kids stopped and said, wow, look at that. What if a kid or a teacher is having a bad day? And yet they have a place they can go and look and get that breath. And all of a sudden, I walk into this school with Louisa Casterdale. And she shows me like seven murals before I'm halfway in the school. And I'm like, I have my mind blown. I'm like, how is this even possible? How is it that schools allow this to happen? In the simplest sense of the word, you know, we transform blank walls into pieces of art. Those murals are impacting those kids every single day. But it really in talking about it came to mean how um, this mural process transformed us as artists. So how do you, by giving of yourself and creating things that are unique to a school and a place, how do you transform as an artist, as a person? They're getting shown a world of art. And so for all of the artists and myself that have worked on it, we changed. That in itself is a feat unmatched by, by most cities. What I'm most proud of is that we have schools that have beautiful original pieces of art, large scale, done by local artists. In many cases, artists who graduated from the very same school they came back to paint in. So it's a lovely circle of art.